This is another video for our series on game schooling with the basics. Today, I want to show you another two-player multiplication game with number cards. Hi, I'm Leanne and I want to inspire families to learn through play. This is a real simple game to set up. We are going to use a deck of Uno cards. If you've got a regular set of playing cards, that will work too. Uh, you can use all the cards or we pick out the factors which we might deem too simple. So I might take out the two, the threes. We also don't want the zeros as well. So that way in this deck, we will have the numbers from four to nine. Today's game encourages learners to practice with bigger multiplication factors. We're gonna lay the pyramid face down like this and we will cover it like so. And my kids get really excited when they see the game take up all the real estate on our table. Do you kids find it just as amusing? I mean, let me know in the comments below. So this way, each row below will have one more than the row above it. And we keep going until we have a pyramid size we like or our deck has run out. Now throughout the game, if there are no cards covering a card, then they can be flipped up. So playing this game face down will help the learners focus on a small selection of numbers instead of being inundated with all the possible options that are open but not available until later. For our table, it looks like we can go seven rows down and starting from the bottom, we will call this the first row. The object of the game is to score the most points. So each player will choose two cards to multiply. So we're gonna choose the best two cards to make the biggest or highest product. Player one is going to choose any two cards from this row and since they are all face up, we can start at the bottom. We will choose the nine and the eight because that would make 72 the highest product. And then we can write that equation on a scoreboard. We will start with player one and they will have 72. Now player two can choose from say eight multiplied by 8 or 6 multiplied by 7, whichever is available and she'll choose 8 multiplied by 8, which is 64. So player 2 will have 64. Now since this card now isn't covered, we can flip it open. And from now on, the 8 on the second row is also available. So back, back to player 1's turn, she might choose to multiply 8 multiplied by 7 and make that 56 for her scoring. Again, since there are no open face cards covering these cards, we can flip them open like so. So now we have 5 and 6. And player 2 can also choose from the second row and the first row. So she will choose the 9 from the second row and the six from the first row. So nine and six will make 54. And she will write her product down. Now this variation makes a great transition from multiplication fluency, which is how familiar and how adept learners are at their times tables, to analysis, making choices as to which is the best number for a purpose. Players keep multiplying two face up cards from any available row and write down the products until there are no cards left. Real quick, two Miss Game School updates that I wanted to give you guys. First up, I want to let you guys know about a free resource that we have made available on our new website. You can download a list of all the gateway games that we have used in our humble game school for language arts and another one for early math. All you have to do is head over to our resource page, enter your email, and the list will get sent to your inbox directly. 
Second thing, if you are so inclined to support this channel, now you can also do it through our buy me a coffee link on the website. You can now reach out to me, have a chat and get direct access and individualized consultations on how to help your family achieve your learning goals through games. So all the Miss Game School links are in the description below and let's get back to the video. So 6 times 6 is 36. Then these two cards are available because no cards are covering them. And then I might choose 9 and 8, which would be 72. Player 1 can go here, since this is available, and pick a 6. So she can multiply 5, multiply it by 6 which would be 30. And it leaves the only one available. Which is At the end of the game, players can add up their products and the whoever has the largest score is the winner. This variation is a good seek to playing tabletop board games that hinge on factor analysis. Now I'm thinking of games such as Happy City and Station Master, which we have covered in our previous videos. The object of Happy City is calculated by multiplying the number of citizens by the number of hearts. In Station Master, the book player has a total of three and two twos, which make seven, and add one more to get eight. His efficiency point is 18 multiplied by eight, which is 144. If your students need more work on fluency, check out how we used Combo Clash and Ohanami to bring multiplication to life. Or if you want your students to discover the relationships between numbers, factors, and their products, including prime numbers, make sure to check out how we have used Joyful Mathematics multi-board game to do that. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Yay!